Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to tackle decorating this vintage bookcase. After taking down the Christmas decor, I decided to give this piece a facelift. If you stay to the end of this video, you can see a mini tutorial of how I refinish the piece, which is actually two pieces that have been married together. Uh, more on that later. My first step was to gather all the books that I had lying around. I have a large collection of vintage and antique books. It's actually what I prefer. And I started gathering them by color. So my main core colors were just neutrals, browns, beiges, and blacks. And then I did blues, reds, and greens. I also took some time right after this to gather a bunch of the decorations that I was hoping to put on here, just small collectibles that I felt like fit the theme. So I didn't record that, but you'll see all the details later. I always like to have everything in front of me when I get started on a project so I really know what I'm going to be working with. I decided that I wanted to do the grouping of neutrals on the top and then I kind of played around with the different colors on different levels but I started with my largest piece first which was this antique scale it weighs a ton uh, I tried it on the bottom shelf first but it really blended in and then I ended up going to the second shelf so there was a little bit more contrast with it but I didn't want to add too many books on this because obviously the antique scale took up a lot of space and it was the focal point I added some old navy blue books on either side just to give it a little bit of height. I really struggled with what to put on the scale. The side that has the prongs on it just didn't fit anything. I feel like maybe a bowl or something would be great there. And then I just ended up putting this little candlestick in the center. Can't say it's my favorite, but I will probably revisit this at a later date and put something else there that I love. Then, of course, the cute little Scotty dog and this framed photo. This is actually a photo of my great-grandparents, uh, my great-grandma Katie, who I was unknowingly named after, and then my great-grandpa, and then I believe a sister. I'm not entirely sure, but the outfits are quite fancy, and I believe it was a wedding photo. Anyway, I did not like the frame that it came in. It did have the glass that fit a new frame that I had that did not have glass, and so I just swapped that out, and then I used just the filler to make sure it stayed in place. It was a perfect fit and I felt like it was a nice personal touch to add to the bookshelf. Now moving on to the top shelf. So I'm definitely keeping the neutral books up at the top. I like how they're a little bit lighter towards the top and not as heavy as some of the other colors. I wanted to add some vintage clocks that I had, some brass clocks that I thought kind of met the theme as well. So I was trying to figure out here how high I could stack the books and still fit the clocks in there. A lot of times decorating is simply trying something out to see if it works and rearranging it if it doesn't. So I'm just going to play around with this until I find that I like it. It took a few tries, but I finally came up with this selection that was my favorite. A lot of these are super old books, a lot of wear, a lot of memories and stories, I'm sure, behind each one of them. But they are a perfect stack for the clocks. And then here are my little collection of clocks. So I had two round, which I put on either side for balance. I like symmetry when it comes to decorating pieces. And then the little square one right in the middle. And yes, I am fully aware that all of the times are wrong. It's for looks. It doesn't bother me. Okay, two shelves down, two to go. The next one up is the second shelf. I was really unsure what to do on the bottom shelf, so I was kind of saving that one for the last. You'll see my struggles later on. So this is the second shelf that I have already put this photo on that is of my grandpa. He's riding a motorcycle here. Really cool dude, obviously, with his bike and with his friend. It was blown up, and I believe on Google, my dad actually had this done and put a little frame around it, but just a cool photo. Then I added red on the second shelf to kind of contrast with the neutral that was above it. And I thought it went really well with the black and white graphic photo. I just did a row of books and then I put the framed art on top of another book to give it height. And then I had this little collection of neutral books that were left. And I don't know if you can tell, but they have a little bit of red on them. So they kind of go with this. And then I had this little vintage metal mouse that was adorable. And one of the books actually was about a mouse. So... I kind of prop that in the back to showcase the red and match the mouse. All right, now on to the bottom shelf. I can't put it off any longer. 
I just was struggling with what I wanted to do with it. I had a ton of books left and I wanted to use as many as I could because I wanted this to look good, but I also wanted it functional. So I thought if I just started by doing a row of books along the bottom, just a mix of colors or putting them in order by color, but none of that was working. It just felt like it was too much dead space above it because this was the tallest shelf of all of them. I then recalled a book that I had been looking through of Swedish or Scandinavian design, and they had jam-packed a bookcase full of books at random heights and just stack them all different ways. So I thought, hey, I'll give that a try and see if I can make that work in this space and just jam as many books in as I can. But that was really like a overwhelming puzzle that was just not working. I have no idea how they do that. I might have to go back and check. But that just frustrated me. I finally gave up on that one. Okay, let's go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. I'm just leaving this in here so you can see that sometimes design takes time. I said this before and I'm sure I'll say it again, but design is just about trying things out. No one has to love it. It's all about what you love. So I know there's specific design rules and things that you're supposed to do, but just try it until you like it. And if you like it, you're the one that has to live with it. So who cares if no one else likes it? While we're waiting for me to decide on this shelf, I'll just take a moment to thank you for watching today. And I also would love if you subscribe to my channel or comment below if you got any inspiration out of this video. I finally gave up on the jammed bookshelf. It was just too much. I clearly am not Scandinavian or Swedish. My Irish roots were um, not cooperating. So anyway, I wanted to add some balance, I decided, because of the large white framed piece. It just felt like that was the only white large piece on the shelf. So I went and found this vase, which is very old, kind of stoneware, and then grouped the books around it. So again, just editing out some that I don't need or feel like don't quite go. These actually looked really cute on this horse. So little side note, just a side decorating piece. Because I was now going for a more simple look, I decided to group the books in the center. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to do all the same color or just a variety of colors to kind of tie the whole bookshelf together. But again, I'm just playing around with this and seeing what works. All right, so this is what I finally ended up with. It took a lot of editing and major brain power, but I did a mix of colored books from largest to smallest. I ended up downgrading the vase so that I could add some floral, uh, which I'll do in just a second. And then I paired it with some standing books on the right side. Are any of you book lovers? I just can't get enough of old books. I don't know what it is, if it's the history or just the look of them, but there is just something about old books. Drop a comment below if you love books as much as I do. Anyway, I feel like this is the best version of what I had. It was much cleaner and it just went well with the rest of the shelves. I was just overthinking it. Okay, now on to adding some floral. I just felt like there was nothing really soft on this bookshelf and it needed something to soften all the hard edges and lines. So I had these little peonies, I actually sell them in my store if anybody's interested. These peonies were the perfect addition. So I'm not quite done yet. There were a couple of little things that I wanted to add, just the little details that I think make a piece special. There were little divots after I had painted this piece that just didn't look right. They needed something. So I took a gold Sharpie and I literally just freehanded them in the holes. And while you can't see it right now real well, you'll see it in some of the shots that it just added a nice little touch. Then at the base on the library cabinet, I had these little openings for labels. My niece had put little labels in there that were so sweet. I keep those later. I'll show you that. Um, but I pulled them out and used them as a template for making new ones. I just picked random names that seemed to go with the theme like gardening, interior decorating, world travel. So nothing specific to what was in it necessarily. I just was going for a look here. I took cardstock and using the template that my niece had used before, um, thank you for that, Jalen. Um, I was able to just cut out and insert them inside. So this one was a little large, I just trimmed off the top. And then I freehanded it. If you don't like hand writing them, you don't have to. I just used a black Sharpie and I don't mind my writing. It's not the best, but I just block printed on there and it seemed to work. 
but you could print them. So you could just measure that out and print it on a printer if you wanted to do that. But I wanted the instant gratification of being done with this. So I just hand wrote them. Maybe I'll print them later. Who knows? And last but not least, I slid the original one done by my niece back behind this. So for safekeeping. All right, here they are. Just a couple more little last minute touches like my grandma's journal from when she was a girl and this little tiny dictionary. All right, you guys, this is it. All of the shelves are decorated and ready to go. And I'm pretty pleased with it. Except for maybe that candlestick. It's still bothering me, but don't forget, I have a mini DIY on how I refinish this piece up next. But I just wanted to take a moment to thank you again for watching, and I hope this gave you some inspiration for your bookshelves. Happy decorating, friends. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and walk you through a little bit of the process behind how I refinished the piece that I used in this video. Now, I am going to be dropping a video in the next few weeks on a dresser that I'm refinishing, and I will do a full tutorial with a lot of details in that. But I'm gonna just go over basic steps today. Uh, if I miss anything or you're curious about anything, don't be shy to ask your questions below, and I'd be happy to answer them. First off, I just wanna make note that this is not one piece that I purchased altogether. It actually is two pieces that I've married together. So the library cabinet is something we've had a while, and it was very cool, but it just was not super functional. Uh, and then we found this bookshelf that fit on it perfectly. So there's like an inch to spare on each side. It fits kind of inside the nook there. And then we just secured it to the wall and stacked it on there. But the finish was where the problem was. It had a Mardi Gras finish of purple and teal and yellow. Did not go with the library cabinet at all. So first things first, you want to clean your piece. You want to just make sure it's dust free and ready to go. Make sure you let it thoroughly dry before you start on any of the other steps. Then I wanted to start in on the back of this piece. It was a yellow finish, almost a painted wash. So I could still see the wood grain, but it was just a really gross color and it did not go well with the look that I was going for. So I thought maybe, just maybe, I could warm it up and get it to match the bottom of this piece by adding some gel stain over the top. I did not use Java. I actually used brown mahog ended up using brown mahogany. Love this product not sponsored by them, just a big fan. I did not strip it, I did not sand it, I literally cleaned it, and then I wiped some of this on. I used a sponge, which I often use with gel stain, wiped it into all the details all around the edges, gave a good surface coat, and then I wiped it off with a paper towel and let it dry. It gave a warm tone to it, and it ended up matching the bottom piece very, very well. Side tip, use gloves, it can be very messy. You'll thank me later. Next up, it's time to refinish the frame. So I went with my favorite milk paint, which is also by General Finishes, no surprise. I did not use alabaster, obviously that's a white. I did lamp black on this, which is your perfect black. It's awesome. Uh, I did a couple coats, I just put it on with a brush. I used, this is still wet and obviously well loved, but it is a great brush for large surfaces. Uh, I did a couple coats and then I did some touch up. Some of the yellow was showing through on the finish that was there originally. I did use this little guy for the corners, made it really easy. So general finishes paint and the gel stain urethane does not need to be top coated, but I do like to top coat black because one, it picks up a lot of dust and you'll regret it if you don't top coat it when you try to clean it. The dust just kind of sticks in it. So I went with another one of general finish finishes really great products is their high performance top coat. I normally go flat on the black because I didn't want a high shine. I wanted it to look aged and it's perfect. I love it. I just did a quick coat on that. You can either use a foam roller for large surfaces or just a foam brush. Then I let it thoroughly dry and you're ready to go.